I was speaking with a man today who had to demote one of his employees, and it was a very hard thing to do. And he needed to demote him for legitimate reasons. There was objective evidence that he was not qualified to do the job that uh, he was promoted to do. And I was talking to him about something that I have shared a few times within our ministry. And it's this idea that it's better never to promote someone. It's better never to hire someone than to promote or hire them and then have to remove them later. There are two, there are two, tensions here and you have to choose which door you want to walk through either have the hard conversation on the front end that says you're not qualified to do this or have the more difficult conversation at the end after they were promoted and then of course there's collateral damage there's lowering of morale there's people who have been hurt etc and then you have to remove the person. There's a whole lot more damage afterwards. And so even though both conversations are hard, you're not qualified, we're not going to promote you, or you're not qualified and you have caused so much trouble that we have to fire you. Uh, those are two difficult conversations. But the courageous and the compassionate thing to do is to never promote someone rather than promoting them and then having to retract them later. I was sharing with him about my Baptist upbringing, uh, a, a common way of selecting a pastor, and it's not across the board, but it is quite common, is that what you do is you have a gentleman come in, he preaches a message, he goes out, eats with a few people on Sunday afternoon, maybe meets with the deacons, and then there is a vote. And of course, that could be uh, that That is a recipe for disaster because there's no character discernment. There's no true vetting of the individual, uh, his marriage, his wife, his family, uh, the entire context of his life. You just have an isolated slice. And it's kind of like looking at someone on Facebook. You see the best version of themselves. And so when someone comes and preaches a message and goes out and eats with a few people and has a meeting or two, obviously they're going to put their best foot forward and you're not going to know who this person really is until after they've been in place for a while and then you recognize that we have made a terrible mistake. This is also something that we talk about with our mastermind students because I use the term mismatch often, and that is when you have a, a counselor who is not qualified for the counselee that they are meeting, that is a mismatch uh, because the competency doesn't rise to the level of the need, and so there's a mismatch situation. Therefore, it is important that uh, we uh, as supervisors as carefully as we can discern, I recognize that that is still a subjective assessment, uh, but nevertheless, we have to do the hard work of carefully assessing our mastermind students so that we can give them our perspective on them about their abilities so that they can be properly placed in God's world, doing the work of discipleship at the level of their competency or where the level of their comp competency is today. Uh, it doesn't mean that they have maxed out their ceiling or maxed out their potential, but it's where they are today and they need they need a warning. Uh, they need to carefully evaluate who they are and what they can do so that they're not driving past their headlights and they're not hurting people. And so carefully vetting our students is an integral part of our program. Now, there could be at least two reasons why someone would promote someone who is not qualified for a position. One is fear of man that they are afraid to tell this person no. They don't want to disappoint the individual. And so they say yes, when in reality, everything within them is saying no. But because the person who's doing the promoting doesn't have the courage, uh, doesn't really love this person, and doesn't really love others the way that they should, because you're putting other people in harm's way when you promote someone to interact with these people. And so you're not loving this individual, and you also are not loving this individual's constituency. Uh, you're not loving them properly because you're promoting them, and that is a lack of fear of man, or, or that is fear of man. 
actually. And then the other reason is pragmatics, that you're looking just to fill a slot. You're, you're looking to put someone in a position because you're busy, you're tired, you got a lot going on, you need someone pushing papers, you need someone doing something. And so you promote them for pragmatic purposes, even though you know that this is not the best fit. And so the, the, the saying still stands, it's better never to promote someone than to promote them and then have to uh, de- promote them or demote them uh, later. And so that's something to uh, think about. And so we want to uh, carefully discern people. And then on the other end, the person who's being promoted or demoted uh, is at that part, we need to have self-awareness about our own limitations. Uh, we can struggle with selfish ambition. We can want to be a certified biblical counselor as, as some kind of validation where we find our identity in our in what is attached at the end of our name or what is the prefix to our name. We want to be a pastor so-and-so, or we want to have these letters at the end of our name, or we want to have a certificate. And if we struggle with uh, selfish ambition, which is fed by fear of man, wanting to be accepted and approved by other people, want to be part of the group, want to be on the team, uh, whatever those uh, insidious desires are, we need to have a, a, a reasonable amount of self-awareness so that we aren't pushing ourselves past our own headlights. Uh, we've had that conversation. I've had that conversation with several people over the past quarter of a century that they wanted to be a biblical counselor. They saw themselves in a particular position, but it was obvious, not just with me, but it was obvious with other people that they just don't have what it takes or they don't have what it takes at this time to sit in that chair. And so I've had those hard conversations with people and some of them continued to push on and they would not listen uh, for whatever reason they would not, uh, they either didn't perceive, they didn't have the self-awareness or maybe they did know, but their selfish ambition was driving them past their abilities. And so there's a lot going on here when it comes to this idea of putting a person in a position. Uh, the mantra still holds true. It's better not to promote them than to promote them and have to demote them later.